Estamos emitiendo. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Please. Uh, they are having some problems in the room in France with too many microphones, so we have to test how is it from here. And if they cannot fix it, I will just start from here and do it. So can you tell me in the chat in, on YouTube if you can hear me and see me well? I see myself. I can hear myself. Everybody there? Just chat in the comments. Ah, very good. I see you, I see you. Very good. Okay, so they are having some problems there with too many computers as always. I have done this one time, so I was lucky to, to know how my three computers work, but I know it's a very, very difficult process, especially in a room, in a big room like they are there. Okay, I see Melissa and Anna, yes. We can see and hear each other. I will try to go from one screen to another. And more or less, we will keep in touch. But uh, remember that I'm talking here from the Czech Republic and the, everything has to go through the interwebs and it will take some time until it reaches YouTube. So there might be a bit of a delay between what I'm saying and, and your questions your and your comments in, in the chat. So, well, I will start and maybe at the end we can we can have associ association Veracruz in, in the call. Um, I will start by introducing them. <laughs> they are my host, Association Veracruz, and, and thankfully I have here a description to tell you about them. Veracruz is the Naturalist Student Association of the Paul Sabatier, sorry for my pronunciation, University in Toulouse. This association was created in 1996 by five intrepid students who, after returning from a mission in Mexico, decided that they wanted to make the audience and population conscious of the ecological situation and the conservation of nature. Having more than 40 active members in the past, this association almost disappeared during the pandemic, like many other things. And fortunately, in October 2021, the association was rescued by Maripia, the first post-pandemic president. And today, uh, the association carries out different naturalistic process, projects, such as the installation of nesting boxes for bats, the management of the green areas of the university campus, the organization of conference and radio broadcasts, among many other things, like this talk. And, and well, <laughs> this talk, who, who am I and why am I doing this? And basically, who am I to give advice and, and why am I giving this talk? Well, my name is Fernando. I'm a biologist. And the reason I'm giving this talk is to mainly to show off and share cool photos like this one when I was in Africa diving with crocodiles. But uh, a better reason, maybe more useful for you, is that I, I have done many, many things, mainly because I'm very old and I have had time to do many cool things in many countries, in many envi environments, in the mountains, in everywhere. And I've done all those things in almost every sector in biology. I've been in academia, I've been in the public sector, uh, working with companies, with NGOs. What's the, the only problem? <laughs> the only problem is that I have done this, like this, uh, jumping around, following my gut from uh, without strategy or without planning too much. I was just jumping around. And now looking back, I can see that I, I could have done it in a much better, much efficient way. And that's the benefit for you. Uh, for, for this talk, like you can learn from my errors <laughs> and maybe all can learn many things. So, so this is going to be my talk more or less. I'm gonna explain things a bit crazy like, and then we will try to get some sense out of uh, my crazy experiences. 
And, but I will try to make it in a more or less structured way. So we will talk of four different stages, no? Like what to do if, if you are still in university or if you are starting to look for a job, if you are applying once already identifying a job and applying for a specific job, or if you have been trying unsuccessfully for, for a long time. We are going to go through these stages and even if you are not in some of them, pay attention because I discovered that you can learn many, many things from the past, uh, the present and the future. And with that in mind, we are going to start a long, long time ago. <laughs> we are going to start even before university, way back, like before I started university, because think that I started university in 1998, which was a different century altogether. <laughs> and we are going to go even back, even farther back to my actual childhood. So looking, looking back, what, what were the actions, the strategies, and the personal characteristics that, that benefit me the most in that time. Okay, this is, well, my sister will kill me, but, but this photo demonstrates something that has helped me a lot during my career, which is to focus, to focus. As you see here, I, I was very lucky. I knew very early on what I wanted to do. I, I have wanted to work with animals since forever, since I have memory. I had, I had focus, I, I was very focused. And this focus, this focus gave me many perks, many advantages. I learned many uh, related skills, uh, a lot of uh, this, this playing with animals, looking for animals and, and being focused on animals helped me more, move faster towards my objectives because I spent the whole childhood breeding crickets or spiders or rescuing birds. And being all day around animals may earn me a reputation. That is, every, everybody, everybody knew uh, what I was, uh, what I wanted, what I liked. So for example, when I, when I was um, visiting the park, the local park with my grandmother, she knew that I wanted to meet all the guards in the park. And, and then the guards knew me when I was visiting later, when I was by myself. And they were, they were showing me where all the nests were. And then they let me go there and volunteer even. And I was working there in the park. All of this, this because my mother had introduced me to them and, and they knew that I liked it. And this, this reputation was allowing me to reach more opportunities, like visiting, going inside the cages, for example, in the, in the zoological park. And this, this created a loop, no? It's, it's a loop where the more I learn about animals, the more people I met and the, the higher my reputation. And this reputation gave me access to more skills, more, more knowledge. And this was very good also for my family and friends because everybody knew, for example, what to give me for my birthday animal books, or where do we go on holidays? We go camping, <laughs> or I don't know. Also, also, I got some flexibility in some rules. For example, I could stay late and watch uh, the TV late in the evening if there was some wildlife documentary. It's a, it's a growing loop that if you think a bit about it, it applies also to all the other stages in our life including the professional one. Because if you're focusing on one topic, you gain all the related knowledge, you know better the sector, and then, and then you know the people in the sector, and then your LinkedIn will be very focused on that, and then your contacts will know, uh, ah, this guy does this specific thing. So every time the topic comes out in a conversation, they, they think of you and they say your name, and then you get more people, more contacts, and this loop continues all your life. So, so a, a learning from our childhood, focus, try to focus. But then what happens? Are we going? I'm going to look at the, very good. Very good. Okay, yeah, that's that thing for English speakers. If you get some questions or something is not working, you can, you can write in the chat, in the live chat of, of YouTube. And, and Sarah will, will reply to everything as possible. 
and and we can continue. Okay, what happens? We are talking about focus. Most people, when I tell them this, and also when I was when I was younger, when I was starting, the main question, the main like sentence we say is, "But I don't know what I want to do." I mean, how can I focus if I don't know what to do? Because and this this is this is very true and very important, and I, I also had it. Like a vocation, don't they don't fall from the sky. Even in my case, I, I had a very rough idea of, of what I wanted to work with animals. But what actually do you do with animals? How do you get money? How do you get a job? Uh, what do biologists do all day? Uh, you see, this is one of the things that I could have done better. How do you find a focus, a vocation? To find a vocation, you need to try things. And the best way is, is to do exactly again like we used to do when we were li little kids. You remember that that we were playing uh, this week I'm an astronaut and you are playing in the in the playground and you are an astronaut. And then next day you are a princess and then you want to try dresses and then a doctor, a veterinarian, mommy, buy that toy for me or buy me a firefighter costume. And but now now it's the same. And now it's the same it's, as if we were kids. Uh, it's the same, but we have to focus a bit in our sector. Instead of asking our mom for a firefighter costume, what we ask is our teachers, please, could you introduce me to a lab technician, for example? Or I want to know what, what is that job like? Or, or you, can call, you can ask your mom again and ask her, do you know any veterinarian, a scientist, someone that works in, in a job that might be interesting. But then as I, as I wrote there, what, what if I like many things like, like we all do? We don't know many things. And we think we can like, we can enjoy any job that we see uh, on the TV as a biologist doing, working with any animal. Yeah, I would like to do that and that too. No problem. I would like to do any of that. How do we focus in that case? Well, for this, you know, uh, people that know me know they, they, they know the sentence I like a lot. This, you can do anything, but not everything. Actually, I thought of the Spanish version of this sentence in the jungle back in a few years ago. And, and I thought I had invented it myself, but it was from, from this book, Getting Things Done, from David Allen. And it's basically that you have time to do almost anything in your life. The only problem is that you cannot do it all at the same time. So this is the same. And if you want to try things, if you want to have to test professions, uh, you have to do it one by one, like testing one every month, every week, or trying to learn one by one like this. I'm, I'm going to try to explain this strategy uh, using something I also love apart from, from animals since I was very little. My biggest interest apart from wildlife. Apparently, since I was very little, what I really enjoyed was trying to talk to girls. Uh, pff, I didn't do this very well ever and I still don't do it, but I, I seem to like it since I was that little. And why is this important? Because uh, apart from training myself for, for failure, <laughs> like here, see that you can see that she doesn't want to be with me, to dance with me. Well, a few years later, one summer, something very important occurred in my life. It was a few years later, I was already a bit older. I was like 13 or something like that, no, something like that. And I was on holidays uh, on my island, Menorca in Spain. And I was, I was on holiday there, and, and then I met a girl called Nicole. Nicole. Nicole was beautiful. I fell in love as a, only a teenager can fall in love. And the problem is that I didn't speak any English. It was super hard. I, I had started very late to learn English, and I, it was super hard to communicate with her. But I managed somehow to get her postal address. You know, this, this was... 
not last century. Well, yeah, it was last century. There was no internet. There was no nothing. No phones. We only have letters, like like our grandfathers. So I I got something from this. I got a purpose and a project. I wanted to get Nicole's attention. And for that, I tried with the only tool I had, writing letters. That was my project. I will try to send her a letter every week and I will have to write it in English. So this thing made me write a letter in English once a week for a long time. And, uh, and well, what, what do you think happened? Uh, well, <laughs> sadly, sadly, Nicole um, they stopped replying after a while. But the good thing is that in the process, I managed to, to get better at English. And then my parents, they saw some potential in this and they started sending me to, to summer camps, to in, international summer camps with lots of other people. And there were, there were girls from other countries. So I was again writing letters. And this time, I, I, for some time, I was writing letters constantly every week with, with uh, 40 people, 40 different people. My house is full of boxes of letters from all over the world, from people, from young people I met. I met many friends like that. And it was our WhatsApp back in the day. But imagine I did all of that in English and little by little with that project, I managed to get very, very good at English, which gives us the, the real mm, good thing about this that even with this system, even if we don't get our goal, the attention of Nicole, <laughs> we can earn, we can learn something from the process. And this is why systems are better than, than objectives. Having a project, something specific, is very, very useful. I got to university and I went, I was very, very advanced. I, I knew how to speak English. And now, I mean, it's not so good. <laughs> You can hear that my English is not perfect, but at least I can communicate. I work in another country. It's helping me a lot and all because I have a clear purpose and a project. Okay, let's wrap up this section before university a little bit. What's the best strategy? The best strategy is to have focus because that true vocations don't fall from the sky. You have to, to work on them, to explore things. But how to explore in order? You do, for example, I, re I would recommend if, if you are in any stage, but especially before university or before going to, to the job market, try real things. What are people doing? Can I learn more about that specific thing? What would I like to do that? Remember that sentence that, that there is time for, for anything, but not for everything. You have time, and I have proven that. I have learned that because I've done many, many things. And, but the only way was to do one at a time. And I'm still suffering. Like I, I try to do, as you know, many things, and I suffer a lot, but we have to remember this sentence. And then, and then across, along, along this way, while you are exploring, try to learn new abilities, skills, and experience on the way. And the best way to, to gain new abilities and to keep the knowledge and proof of all of this is to do it through projects. You do it, you choose your purpose, something that is important to you, and then you apply a project to that. Something that has limited time, like a week, a month, uh, three months, but has a clear end result that then you can put in your CV. For example, I, I was using a weekly letter and I have boxes of these letters. So in your case, and for a job, it can be something to like writing a blog or, or something that, that you, can, you can prove later in your, in your CV. And of course, the most important bit, as we said, the process, the system. Remember, even if you don't get the girl <laughs> or the boy, <laughs> you learn in the process. That's the most important. Okay, let's make a pause. I'm going to read if there, you have any comments. Why write questions? Do you hear me well? Do I speak very fast? You can write in the chat. Mm. Okay. You can keep on. Let's go to the next one. Next stage. When you are in university. 
Uh, of course, this is obvious. If you don't study, if you don't study, you will not pass. But I, I will go farther. I, I will be more detailed. What was the first thing I learned when I entered the university? For me, the first thing I discovered is that I had freedom. It's, I, I was an adult, I was 18 year old, and I, now I could decide to go or not to the classroom. I decided I went to study, I'm a grown up. So, so what did I do with all that freedom? Well, like what everything does, no, everybody does this. But also very soon, I also kind of learned two things that helped me a lot along the way, very important things. I'm going to explain them through more intelligent people that they explain it better than me. And then, and then we will see what, what I got from that. But uh, as always, there were more intelligent people that had re rephrased what I was feeling at the time. One of the first things I, I felt is what this guy, Mark Anderson, wrote in this, in this, in this quote. And, and don't you worry, I, I'm doing something that you shouldn't do in, in presentation, which, which is putting a lot of text in the, in the slides. But uh, in the end, I will, I will send you, I will put an email there and you can, you, I will send you these slides in a PDF. And that's why I'm writing so many letters. Also, just in case uh, I, I don't speak uh, with a nice accent and you can have the, what I wrote there. But uh, I will summarize what this guy said, is that, that in the world, uh, there are many expected rules that you can bend a little to your benefit. You can, there are many things once you get in university that you can do in different ways. Like this, I don't know, there are many examples, silly examples, but for example, now you don't have to ask for permission to go to the toilet or things like that, or, all that freedom that you have in university as an adult, you can use it to go towards your aim faster and with more efficient. You have to identify it and go for it. There is um, another quote that I like, which is that the standard pace is for champs. Uh, it's, it's from this book, Hell Yeah or No, and it's this guy, Derek Sievers, he studied music. And before he started to, to study, he, he, went to, uh, he went to the house of one ex-professor and then he asked him for advice. And the, professor, the, the advice the professor gave him was that the system is designed to, to not leave anybody behind. That actually is very easy to go faster, to do much, much more than the rest. So combining these two things, you, you can bend the world, bend the rules and go faster and do much more than you think during your university years. And well, it's not, it's not that I follow this advice and I was, I mean, I took a version of it and I did a version of this, which was that somehow I thought that, well, maybe I don't need to wait to start working as a biologist. Maybe I can start doing things. There were two, there were many things that I did with that time, mainly because I wasn't, go, wasn't going, uh, attending the classes too much, but I had the best uh, notes from the university, from a friend. So I, I cover it like that, but I recommend you to go to all the classes. <laughs> but with all this time, I did many, many things. And two of the most important decisions I made were these ones. I started very early on to collaborate with the zoology department. I went up there and then I knocked a door and I said, I want to be an ethologist. I want to study animal behavior. What can I do? What can I do? And then a professor told me, okay, take this, this food, this water and go feed the birds and work in, in the department. Okay. And then I was already a biologist or I was feeling like that. And that helped me a lot. That was one of the best decisions because it was my first step in research, in, in science. And that opens many doors later. And then the second thing I did was to create a web page. I started 
looking for jobs online uh, before finishing university, thinking about this, no, what, what can I do? What, can, what, what am I going to do when I finish? And I started finding many, many job offers all over the world. So I, I started sharing them in this, in this website. And that's how I created the website. And now just, I mean, the, it has given me so many unexpected opportunities. It's amazing. So of course, I mean, you can do these things, but you can do many, many other things. It's you, the most important thing is that you don't do just a degree because think everybody is going to have the same paper when you finish. You will have the same certificate. Everybody will be a biologist or whatever your degree is. So you have to, to use the time as much as you want using that bending the world and, and knowing that everything is set up so that everybody can advance. You have to fill that time with more projects. And, and what do I do? What do I do? I don't know. You can do thousands of things. I wrote this slide in, in, in one minute or something like that, just thinking out of my head. And they are silly examples. You don't, you don't have to do these things, but they might give you an idea. You can do all of this and then... <laughs> And you can say you can say the same as always. No, how, how can I do all of that and then pass university and, and get good grades? You know how. One at a time. <laughs> Don't do everything at the same time. But also, also I'm gonna give you um, another strategy to do this better. This strategy is the barbell strategy, and it works for, for this, but also for anything in life. It works. For, for your economy, when you start earning a salary and how to save the money and what to invest in, and but especially for time and for our, our situation, you always have to have a conservative side and an explorer side. Don't do things in between. Go for things that will have a large chance of success, like on the left, things that are safe, that are clear, that require a constant effort and, and the rewards are going to be safe, but in the long term. And then and the explorer side it is where you go crazy. And then you try there are things that have a high, a, a low chance, but of a big, big reward. And, and it's just to try and explore things. So for example, in the conservative side, get your degree. That's very important. And try to at least get nice scores like at, at least scores that don't close doors like if you if you don't pass then it's, it's gonna close doors for the future well i mentioned the importance of the english because it multiplies your in your case from france and for other countries you can try another language because it multiplies your opportunities and and it's basic but particularly english is a basic conservative side thing to learn and then if, once you have a, um, an objective, try to get specific courses that build on that objective and take you slowly but surely to your, to your desired place. And then as you advance, and then you can decide to do a master's, a PhD, or, or your permanent job, you, you treasure those things and work on this in a conservative way. But what to do in the explorer side? There is those things I mentioned, those, those projects, crazy projects that you can do while in university. For example, you, if you like writing, try to write an article every two weeks about a topic you like, a topic related to your conservative side, to your main objective, or some new profession that you want to test. So write uh, yeah, a blog about, I don't know, what, what do molecular biologists do? I want to try, I'm going to write an interview. I'm going to interview the people in the molecular biology department. And, and then I will write an article every two weeks. Or if you want to, well, let's try photography, then do it in series. No, first we are going to, I don't know, uh, portraits. And I'm going to start a series on pro portraits and I'm going to upload it online. And, and, and put it there, or YouTube, or this thing about collecting professional profiles uh, that, we, that we mentioned when we were kids. Things like that, exploration, and it doesn't matter that it gives us a result because this is where we apply the systems. This is where we write the letters to Nicole. 
And then as you advance, you can do things like I'm doing now. I mean, like organizing expeditions. I never thought I would organize an expedition, but I'm, I'm doing this now. And it's like in the crazy side, if it comes out, it will be great. Or start a company or write a book, things like that. Okay, let's wrap up this university stage. The main important the thing I want you to remember is, is that you can do things in a more flexible way. You, 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 can, you can always think, what else could I do right now to improve my, my situation, to differentiate myself? And can, can I do it faster? Can I get more out of it? You can do much, much, much more than you think. And how do you do it in an efficient way? Using the barbell strategy. Invest enough time and effort to get that decent score, not to close doors, but use all the rest of the time to, to, to explore and to get to this differentiation. Because at the end, everybody will have the same certificate. So what you do in your free time is what's going to open the most doors and, and introduce you to the most people. And also another thing I haven't mentioned is that it's very difficult to stand out if you only do one thing, like photography, for example. But it's much easier to, 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 be, to stand out if you combine skills. For example, if you are the only photographer that speaks French and English and Japanese, then you are going to have you, you are going to be the only one, the best in your category, because there will be no one competing. It's the only way to, to skip competition. And these are a few more things. No, keep on diversifying your skills because Red Queen, everybody's catching up, everybody's getting more skills. So as you advance, keep on learning all the time. And then uh, what I said already a few times that use projects to advance. For example, this is very typical. Don't, don't take just a course. Courses are great, but whenever you start a course, think of a product, a result, something, something tangible that you are gonna create during the course and, and will give you a specific line in your CV. You don't say, I did an art course. No, you, you write, you create your web page using R and then you publish it. And then you have something, you know, I, I demonstrate that I can use R, okay? I'm gonna have a look at your comments. Mm -hmm. However, already lots of time. I will try, well, it's only a bit more. And then we can talk about the expeditions. <laughs> okay, ready for the next one? Next stage, you finish university and it, the scary moment, no? You start the job market. Okay, here I'm, I'm gonna share another quote that I like. It's, it's very visual. If you, if you stand at a bus stop, and you wait, you eventually will catch a bus and you can go somewhere. But if you stop for five minutes and then you go for the next stop and then you run and then you don't stop enough, the buses are not gonna be there and you are gonna miss them. And this is something that, that happens very often in our professional career. We do, I don't know, I'm gonna do volunteering with marmots in the Pyrenees, or I'm going to then ring birds or wherever. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna go to molecular biology. Now I'm gonna go, this is all good and fine to do as projects in series, but try to stay longer in a place in, in and in, in one of those projects. Try to have a conservative side for longer, not only jumping around like I did, which I was lucky and then with a lot of time went very well. But it's easier if at the beginning you consolidate a bit your skills and your experience and you have something to show and then the opportunities will come. We'll explain this in a different way. So for example, I mean, this is, this is the same, no? Focus on your purpose. Try first to choose a, a bus stop, no? Where do you want to go? You want to go to the beach or to the mountain? knowing what do you want to do and, and, and also very important what you are good at because if you don't test first maybe you want to do something like presenting tv documentaries and then you you realize that you don't like to be in front of the camera after a while no it's this thing no first you have to define very well what you do 
what do you want to do and what you is good is a good ability but also can you make money uh, with it is there a market for it because like i was when i was a kid then i was thinking no i'm gonna make me my job is gonna be to look at animals and that, that didn't work i needed to do many more things once you have this purpose more clear this idea of yourself then how do you get to that aim and that objective so the, the first and most useful question is how have other people managed this and for this you need your contacts you need your grandma to introduce you to the guards of the park you need to talk to people call people and and people that are already there so that they tell you how they did it and once you know all those things how they did it okay then you know what you need to get there because because the other people told you ah i needed this this and that and i didn't need a master's but i needed some training in molecular biology and that's how you get how you can fill your gaps in your cv and your experience but by talking to people and what happens very often is that once you go through this deeper project process much deeper than the typical one of trying jobs and, and sending the same CV to all the companies. <laughs> if you go through this deeper project, you will realize sometimes that you didn't like this job, that actually you would like to do something different. So in this case, you start the process again. This is, this is the best process to go deeper. With this specific goal, it's, it's much easier to answer all the questions I receive always in my email. What courses should I take or should I do volunteering or, or I done too much volunteering? What about some internships? But this, do I need a master's? This is the most common question always. So first decide where you want to go and then you will be able to reply these questions. And it will be much faster, I assure you that doing it this way, it looks like more work, but it will you will get there much faster. And remember that, that you can always change after you have been there for a while. You are not closing doors by choosing one. You can do it later. Okay. We're getting there. Let's say you already have your purpose, your specific job. Okay, how do you do it? How, how do you get the job? I will give you some strategies. Using my experience with my very first job. <laughs> this is me a million of years ago in the best job ever. I was, I was working for the government, a regional government in Spain. And I was going with this with my friend Pedro and this big four by four. We were in the field looking at habitats, looking with the binoculars. It was fantastic. I found this job online through my website, no? I, I, I was looking for jobs and I, I found it in the website and then applied for it. And I had a lot of experience and I managed to get the job. But now I know I could have done much, much more. And if someone was to apply to a similar job like this, I will recommend something like this. In these governmental jobs, for example, you can go and see, see job offers from other years, from previous years. So you can find out who got your desired job before. It's super easy to find the names of the people and, and who got the, the best position in the interviews. So here, what can you do? What else can you do? You can stalk a bit in, in a legal way. You can look for these people online. And with with education and, and little by little you could ask them things to help you now and you say hi i know i know you got this this job and i'm also applying for it would you give me some advice could i could i call you for five minutes and and maybe answer these questions and then once you you have these questions you are in a much better place for an interview for example you can prepare a lot your interview you can do it very well and then later you you go to this same place and then you can you can go to the job place of this guy that right now it's already your friend because you have been in contact and finally i don't know i you can you can do all this process slowly carefully and with education but everybody will want to help if you do it in a nice way without without pushing much and you get 
you get so much more value. You get in such a better position in any job doing something like this, calling someone, trying to identify someone that works already in that company or in that university or in that research department, finding out who is there already and asking for advice. What are you looking for? Do you think your boss will like this or that? Do you think they give more importance on this or that? Make Doing this work will give you much more information about the job. And this is good for you to know if you really like the job and also for, for, for the interview, for the, for the person hiring you, he will be, or she, they will be much, much more impressed than with the normal candidate. So yeah, what else can you do in this situation when you are trying to get a job? Another super trick and <laughs> what everybody should be doing is to start the job before the interview, is to demonstrate that you can do it. Let's, let's see an example. So for example, this, this is conservation careers. This is like the largest conservation job market in, in the world. And I'm the, the head of community there. Then these are some of the, the job offers they, they have there. And it's very common to find jobs like this with all the requirements. And you can, of course, have your own experience, have studied a lot and have tried. But the best way to, to stand out in this kind of, of jobs and get to an interview faster is to identify the things that you can already start doing from your home. You can, for example, do your own biodiversity surveys around your house and, and create some, something like blogs or, or using iNaturalist or Natusfera or something like that to show that you are already, are already trying to do biodiversity surveys. You can work on Excel and then put that online and describe how you work on Excel. You can, you can use QGIS, but there are some things that are super easy. Like for example, any job that has communications nowadays, it's very easy to replicate. You can do something like this. You can write in your cover letter on, on your email or when you call, look, I, I saw your job after and I, I have created an example of what I could do. You can click here and register in my newsletter and, and then I will do a newsletter like the one you are asking in your, in your, in your job advert. And you could tell me like, like we all did. Uh, but I have never created a newsletter. Is, isn't it better to wait so they, they tell me in the job how to do it? We are used to this from university, from school, that they, we wait for the instructions to how do I do things? Try, learn. These people, they, they want you to do the job. They want you to help them. That's why they are hiring you, not to train you, not to give you an opportunity. They want you to solve their problem. So you can start already. Remember, the world is a malleable place and, and the standard place is for champs. You can start already trying to help, trying to be a professional. So start before that. And it's very easy. You, you just use these tools that are online. They are free. And then you, you play around for one weekend. You create something specific for this job advert. And then you will be ahead of everybody. Doing these things, doing calling people and, and contacting people and becoming more professional from the very beginning, you, it doesn't matter that you use a cover letter or a, or a CV. It has happened to me several times already that I just write an email with some links saying, I do this, I do that. It seems that we are a good fit. Would you like to talk on Zoom or on the phone? And then I don't send, I, I don't, when I apply for a job, I already don't send a CV. You show them the proof and then you tell them that you can already solve their problem. And this is, this is because the function of a CV, a cover letter, is, is just a process for them to decide if they give you or not an interview. So just jump it and try to show them already that you will be able to help them. And once you get to the interview, they already know about you because you, you have been calling people, you know the people working there, and they want just to confirm that you are the best fit and they don't need to search because searching for candidates is a very expensive project process for, for companies. They want you to be the candidate. So, so they are on your side. 
if you don't do anything silly, uh, the application don't make some errors, uh, they will call you. The interview will be there if you have done all the previous work. And, and it will make everything very easy because you, you know everything already. You, are, you don't have nerves, you are more natural, and then you don't need all these tricks that you don't need to have power poses or, or training in the mirror. You just talk to people that already know you. It will be, as I said before, just a confirmation that you can work together. And, and this is what everybody wants. And this comes down to the main point of, of this part, which is, <laughs> which is that, that uh, don't apply to a million jobs. Focus first, give it all to, to one single aim and offer your sword only if you know that they will accept it. Do it very well, but aiming very well. It's the most important and, and it's what works the best. Again, it's the, the fast way, promise. Okay, Oof. updated in the chat for a bit. How is it going? Are you very tired? 6.24, we have been here for one hour, but there is only a little bit left. Okay. Mm -hmm. No questions? Collecting questions. Very good. Then let's continue. We will have people then in the room. Okay, if after all of this, what to do when you have been trying and trying and nothing works and they don't reply and you don't get the interviews and you are tired? What's, what's, what's not working? What's happening? Well, these are the most common reasons for rejection. The obvious one, you don't have the minimum requirements. They need someone that, that can do the job. And if you don't have the minimum requirements, it won't work. You can have maybe errors in your application. This is super important. Before sending anything, you have to have peer review. You have to send your application to your friends, to your families, to professors, to, to colleagues that can help you look at it and find all the little errors that, that you cannot see because you have been working on it for so long that you are blind already to it. So fix those stupid errors. Read what they are asking. What they are asking for a CV and a cover letter and something else. Cover all of those things. Don't say, ah, but maybe they never ask for this, so it won't matter. Lots of people do that. But they don't read the requirements. They just send blindly a CV. Or I did it sometimes that I send a CV in English instead of sending it in Spanish or vice versa because I didn't read, I did it very quick. I thought that I will send more CVs and I will get more results, but yes, it's, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And finally, that your, it's typical, no? That your application is too general, that you, you don't stand out as the person that will help them to solve this specific problem. You just send a CV where you have some general thing and you haven't tried to do yeah, the things that will give give you the standout. Let's let's go through through this a bit. If nothing, if, if none of those reasons are are the, your reason, if what is not working, are you doing everything in your power? Are you using all these things, all these tricks? Are you doing it? Are you sure? Could you do something else this weekend? Look, this guy, this Derek Siever looking at you from the book. <laughs> Could you spend a weekend doing one last thing for this job? Creating, going out in the field and creating your own project or taking some quick photos or, or writing a, a little essay online and publishing it. Can you do one last thing before going to the interview, before applying? Think about it like this. Imagine that, that applying for a job is like a TV show, no? You, you go to this Wheel of Fortune or something like that, and you are one of the selected candidates to go to the end. You will, the, the final price is, I don't know, 20, 30,000 euros, uh, which is a year salary, no, for a job. What would you do if you, is, is your last chance that day 
would you prepare yourself for this competition on TV? You are about to win 30,000 euros. What would you do? Think about it like that when you are at home watching Netflix. Uh, maybe, maybe I could do one last thing. Do it. Because that will put you on top of everybody. What, what if you are not doing these things? I, I mean, if you are doing all of this and it's not working, still maybe it's time to get a more realistic. Maybe you are aiming too high. So start a bit lower. And then once you grab that opportunity, a bit lower one, use it as a step stone to get to the next one. Use it like a ladder and, and it can be easier just to work from the inside. You will get the contacts. So it, try maybe to look for a more realistic objective. But some people, they just say, no, this is too much work. And I, I prefer just to keep on sending CVs every day. I wake up, I look in LinkedIn or info jobs in Spain. This is very typical. You spend the whole morning searching, okay, what jobs do I have? Ah, that one. And, and you click send the CV and this is your job. Every day sending the same CV to the same places. This is so, so common. Okay, <laughs> what can I do? Like, this is not gonna work. But think of all the people that are doing this and, and just go over them. Just try this. Focus first on your purpose and then gain abilities and skills and experience that you can demonstrate through projects. Trust me, it's gonna work. And well, sometimes, sometimes there are things that we cannot control. Sometimes it's not gonna work because all the opportunities are gone because there is the COVID or, or the war or something. It's important to, to distinguish between the things you can control and the things you cannot control. And once this is clear, don't despair. That just don't dwell on what you cannot control. Just say, okay, one more newsletter, one more photo. I, I will do one more thing and not think about the war, not think about the crisis, that there are no jobs, everybody complaining on Twitter. Forget about that. Don't dwell on what you cannot control and focus on what you can do and do it. Just keep, keep grinding and you will get there, I promise. It's, it's a matter of time because <laughs> I wasn't the smartest at all <laughs> and I got so many cool things to do. Trust me. And then following on the topic, we cannot decide when to leave. We, we didn't decide to leave when, when there was COVID or when Russia had decided to get to Ukraine. We have to work with what the time um, that we got. So let's do it. Let's do it and, and don't despair. It, there are lots of opportunities out there and you will get there, I promise. And I think it's enough. So I will stop now sharing. And then I can, if, if they manage to fix the situation back in France, I can invite people in and then we can chat for a little bit. Okay. I will add Melissa. Is anyone there? You can click on the link to enter Zoom and we can chat. Or if uh, Jonathan, I admit you. And if if you don't get to talk, I mean, I, you can write the questions in, in any chat or move it. Very good. And, and I reply from here. But Melissa, Jonathan, if, if you feel free to, to show your faces, to, to talk like normally. Or, or if you don't want, just write in the chat. Who is there? Okay, we'll read through the chat to see if you have any questions. Uh, I see it. Yes, we are just announced an expedition, a guided trip to an island in the Baltic Sea in Sweden. It's a very small little island with thousands of birds breeding there and, and we are going to be ringing them and, and learning things and I will be <laughs> doing things like this, helping people with their CVs, with their applications and 
with their careers at the same time that we are doing barbecues or or just looking at the white illegals or what I say always bichando, like looking for animals and fossils and, and just enjoying nature. So yeah, this is I think uh, I think Sarah might put the link there. I can I can try to find it somewhere. Let me see. But yeah, and the website is <laughs> the website is in Spanish for now. But uh, but we will see if someone is interested. It will be English and Spanish. And if there is English speaking people or or people that don't speak Spanish, we will do it in English. But we will see. It's just open. We finished the web page today, so this is one of the things. Ah, okay. Allow. Thank you for telling me. People can unmute themselves and people can start video. Thank you. Hello, Jonathan. Hey, hello, everyone. That's so nice. <laughs> okay, now, now I think I hear you. Yeah, uh, I'm using my computer, so it should all be good uh yeah so does anyone have questions um you hear us from where we really are speaking yes okay Great. uh it's not a question but uh just uh, thank you for being so inspiring and giving ideas for making our own uh, uh, projects Correct. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for your words. What's your name? Uh, Marie-Pia. Sorry, I didn't hear it. Marie-Pia. Sister. Marie oh, our president. <laughs> 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 thank you for your words. And where, where, what are you doing now, Marie-Pia? <laughs> um, I'm in, I'm going to an an internship in Germany. Uh -huh. for, uh, uh, data monitoring or monitoring territories of uh, Egyptian vulture. Cool. I'm going on a PhD. Fantastic. Such a beautiful animal. I love that. Yeah, you must be excited, right? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very nice. Okay. Any questions? Any ideas? Yes. Uh, do you have a list of the website where we can find the a volunteer experiment experience uh, for summer, for example, or during a, a short time, during a break, for example. We have um, a list where uh, which are good because, for example, uh, last year I wanted to do one in Africa, but with coronavirus it wasn't possible. But uh, I have to pay uh, a lot of money for that. But I don't think normally a volunteer you have to pay. <laughs> so I think it's not a bad one. I'm sorry, I only got a bit of it like could someone repeat closer to the microphone yeah. oh thank you uh do you have a list of web website to uh, do volunteer uh, for summer for break time because last year uh, last year i wanted to do it in africa uh -huh. but i had to pay like a lot of money for it but i don't think volunteer you have to pay so yes. i don't know which one are good or not so do you have suggestion Okay, I share, I share many volunteering through my website, but I agree with you that there, there should be opportunities for everyone and volunteering. I, some, some situations, some organizations don't have the money to, to pay a volunteer, but at least not to charge or it depends if it's a course, if it's an internship, but I understand. I also thought the same. So where to look for, for, for opportunities? A very good place is this website, uh, this, this, this place I work on uh, is Conservation Careers. And I think you can, you can write a link also there, but uh, something we will do, I, I will send you these slides to whoever wants, and, and then I will add some links to the slides and, and, and there and give you some, some, some help. But yeah, Conservation Careers has, they have lots of or searching mm -hmm. <laughs> places. I mean, if you want to do other things that conservation, they, they are very varied, but 
we can we can i can show you more places too thank you <laughs> you're welcome thank you for listening what else we have some questions in the chat if you want to well i do have a question perfect so uh, i found really interesting uh when you talked about all the projects that could be done so i was uh, curious about your blog that uh, you wrote like when did you start it what motivated you to do it and what did you start writing like uh, as a student or how can a student like me uh, start writing a blog and try to get people interested in what i'm interested as well yes 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 that's a good one i started the story is that that i was in the fourth year of my fifth year degree and i started getting scared like oh i should look for a job i'm gonna finish and what do i do so i started looking for jobs online and then i found many but I couldn't apply to them. Like I, there were, I don't know, in Australia and I couldn't go there or there were for people with other degrees. And But I knew many people, no? So I, I started sending, oh, this job is perfect for this person. Oh, this job is perfect for that person. So I started doing it like that. And then lots of people started asking me, ah, do you, can you add me to that email list you have? So I started sending all the jobs in a block to people in the email and then it, it was too much work so i decided to to put everything in a website and then people could look there and i did i did that and then people started asking me questions about the job offer ah, what what should i do to to apply to this one so i sometimes i was replying these questions and little by little i thought it was easier if i put the reply the answers to the questions also on the blog the only problem is that that brought more people with more questions and then it grew, 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 grew. And it was like that, but it was very good because I learned a lot and then I got many, many, many friends and many opportunities. Okay. So in your case, do you like writing? Uh, well, I do want to write more. I recently, uh, for the association, we started writing newsletter, uh -huh. what we were going to do each week. And, uh, I find that really interesting and I would like to continue even during the summer when the association isn't doing much, but maybe like talk about articles I found interesting exactly, uh, and try to make people more interested in what I'm interested as well. That's fantastic. If you can apply to your first aim, a first objective, you know, like focus on one thing. And then, for example, let's say that you would like to work in the future in a company doing environmental assessment, no? Mm -hmm. So you could write one interview every two weeks of the companies around your area. You go there and you say, hi, I have a blog, or you write them an email, I have a blog. Could I have 15 minutes to interview you about your work? I would like to learn about this. And then <laughs> doing this, you can do it as writing as a blog or you can do it as a podcast you can do it in many different ways but the thing of doing this is that in the end you have the contacts of all the companies around your city you have people in each place and then you can prove that you know the the sector you know the thing so i will to anyone listening i will recommend that that you choose an objective and then you say okay i'm gonna make a package out of asking people <laughs> people and then i will have something to show and then when your friends your family they are talking to someone and they ah, i'm looking for someone that works in this environmental assessment ah i know a person that knows everyone <laughs> <laughs> it, it it works very well great well, thank you very much thank you i have a question too perfect like you say that you did before I do all the things that you do now in conservation, you did um, res research things. What made you like left the academy? <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> I will try to be very quick, but this is this is a big one. Let's see. We are back here. 
Uh, okay. If I go next, this this we do at the end. This was the extended edition of the talk. <laughs> but what happens exactly when when you want to switch a sector? This was me in my PhD. This is a final page, the acknowledgments of my of my thesis, my PhD thesis. I spent, I had such a good time in my PhD. I love research. I had it a lot of, I loved it. <laughs> I did lots of super fun things also during my postdoc. This is from my first postdoc in Sweden when we were working in the, in the heated water of the Baltic. It was by a power plant like a nuclear power plant it was using water from the Baltic to, to cool the, the nucleus, the center. And then it was releasing the heated water in a test site. In an, in, it was a, a lake within the Baltic Sea where the water was warmer. So it was perfect to study climate change and global warming. So we were doing this with, with Perch. It was super fun. I loved it. But the days, can be very repetitive that you have to work a lot also on the computer also doing writing papers you you have to to do lots of things at the same time as you advance in academia you you see two things happening <laughs> one is that when you start you think you are the king i remember when i i finished my degree i thought i knew everything then i did a master's i thought i knew everything once you do your PhD, you know you are at the bottom of the chain, that you have so much to learn and you are poof. And then you get in this equilibrium, a strange equilibrium be between imposter syndrome, thinking that you, 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 you are the worst, you do, cannot do anything, or the Dunning-Kruger, you, you think, maybe, maybe I, I don't know anything. Like, or you think you know things, but actually you don't, you don't know nothing. You get, it can be really stressing. Apart from that in academia right now, the most pressure is, is to have publication is such a hard process. And I, for me, it was a different thing. Like uh, this, this, I didn't prepare so well, but it, I will, it will be like this. I was, <laughs> I was like this. It, this was the last year of my second postdoc, the last month, and I was, I was like, oh, I cannot do this anymore. I really need to be more in the field. I need to, to do more things that have an immediate result, an action. I wanted to do more things like all my life. So I was tired and <laughs> not so happy, but I was happy because I, I had realized that I, I needed a new purpose, a new thing. And... And it was because of that, because, because academia was a bit slow for me. I needed to have actions faster. And also when you, when you work in academia, you go usually towards more, I don't know, managing positions. You, the upper position is to be a professor. And a professor spends less time in the field usually and more time trying to get money so that the students go to the field. And I, not only that, and, and you can find your way to have a fantastic career in academia. And I have lots of friends who have lots of fun and enjoy it a lot. And also now I'm back in academia. I also have a position in Lithuania and I'm a researcher there. I'm enjoying it a lot, but I'm choosing a bit what I like and how, how I do it that I can choose now. But back then I was here and I, the, I was smiling because I had found a new purpose. <laughs> Is this this is all disorganized? But yeah, my contract in 2016 has ended. I decide not to apply for more postdocs. I I looking. I was looking for a new job. I had made a decision, and my new Nicole had to be exactly for something that I wanted. No, I wanted more adventure, more variety. I wanted more freedom, more more things. I wanted to keep learning more, and especially this to have more direct impact in on nature and and on people. I wanted to have hands-on conservation and I knew what I could offer. I, I can do many things all the time, many things. <laughs> and I, 
I had a science background. I, I have many contacts. I, I reasonably good at communication. So, okay, what can I do with that? Let's look at, at my Nicole. I need a small organization where, where I could organize things. I want an organization that has different projects that is in a well-connected location. Okay, what, what do I have now that could fit this? I found two things. One it was the Chris Foundation, where I had been, uh, I had been working with them in one of these expeditions with British Exploring. I had been there, and it was in the Peruvian Amazon, and it was to to work on a research station there in the Amazon. For me, it was great, but it wasn't very well connected. I mean, you had to live there, and I also wanted to travel a lot. And I was thinking that maybe for me it would be better some place in Europe so I could travel a lot. And I had Alka Wildlife, which is the NGO I work with now in the Czech Republic, which is in the center of Europe. And I can still, and I did go to the jungle, not whenever I want, I would like to go more often, but it fit more my, my Nicole, no? my purpose. So I, I had friends, I, they had been telling me to come for a long time. So it was very easy yeah, to choose to choose to. But also this, uh, this I can say too. Remember, when you choose a path like academia or whatever, remember that your interests are going to change. So, for example, this happened. When COVID came, I was trapped here in this kitchen. This is my kitchen at home. And all of a sudden, I couldn't go on expeditions. I couldn't do anything. Back when I studied biology, I was, I was this Jack Sparrow. I, I tried statistics and this. And I hated it. But now I started reading about it. I started playing with R. I did during the pandemic, I did like four or five different courses in statistics and R and coding. And then, uh, I don't know, it's not here, but, but then I saw an ad on Twitter asking for some people to, someone that would like data analysis and this thing. And, and then I started working in this thing in Lut Lithuania, helping them with the data analysis here. So, so, so yeah, basically uh, this, it is the same strategy. It's like when you look for a job changing sectors, you go out of academia if you need to, and you use the same strategy. You, you decide who are you, what do you know, and what do you want? And then you go, you try to jump to the new branch maybe with an intermediate job and using the same thing. Focus, impressing them, creating something and then only then offering your job. I, I will stop here because there is there are many things but it's getting late. Let's see, anyone has questions here or if not, we can go to the questions on YouTube. Let's see. Okay, Lakita Taiti is, is asking, hello, you explained that the focus strategy makes you go faster, but what about going step by step? We were taught to go slow since our childhood. So your strategy is to go slower or to go faster? <laughs> to go slower, to go faster. This is, this is exactly it. You have to go both slower and faster. And this is this, is this barbell strategy. You have to, to keep something safe like this conservative approach, like working on your, on your degree, but also use all the free time that that gives you because then you can do many more things. More than faster is do more things. And this is, this is real, the real solution to everything. Go always ask that question. What else could I do now that is not typical? Like this, this is example I gave of, of the creating a newsletter for, for an interview. Like if you, if you show them immediately to a company, hey, look, I'm doing already your job. But you like how I do it? I can continue doing it for a salary. <laughs> it's much faster. That is a thing. I don't know if that replies your question, Lakita. Javier, 
what is the strategy to change jobs for one in conservation, taking into account that you have to continue playing the market? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't, don't, don't leave your branch. I will, I will do exactly that. Looking for a more specific thing within conservation, which is super broad. Look for something more, more specific. And then once you identify it, create, think of a project that you can do in your free time after your normal job and whatever you are doing. And, and, and little by little, every week, every day, every evening after dinner, do a bit of your project. And then little by little, you will get that experience that you require for conservation. Join associations, join clubs, create your own clubs, your own association. Do extra things in that topic. And it can be very fast and very easy. It can be only a weekend project. I do, I would like to do many things, but what I'm doing now, for example, is, is for personal things, like, I don't know, with the Fitbit. So now I have an R, R script that takes the data from the Fitbit and I make my own plots and my own things. And I, I made another, I don't like paperwork. And for example, here in Alca, in our NGO, I have to do a week, a monthly report of the hours I work. So now with R, I have automated, automated this process. I just use a website and then the code gets the website, the, the hours I'm in the computer and then it does all the calculations and then sends the report to, to the director <laughs> and then I don't have to do it. So that's a project that actually shows that I can use R and it's something that is always is interesting and it's always something like that. So yeah, I recommend to do things like that, things that you can prove. <laughs> Many more. Okay. Any more? <laughs> I think they, there was a question before uh, uh -huh. about, like, can you talk a little more about your expeditions? Ah, my expeditions. Okay, I, I did. Uh, several expeditions with first with the British Exploring Society. Well, first before that, I did many expeditions as a as a researcher. I went to to Australia three times to 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 Trinidad and Tobago to to many places to do research, and I of course love it to be in the field. And then I thought I needed more of that. I have a a blog post in English and Spanish about how one of these expeditions made me switch from academia to conservation. So I will, I will put that in, in the links. But uh, mainly, yes, I did many expeditions with British Exploring Society, which is an, an amazing charity in the UK. And I went to the Amazon, to, to Canada, to, I went down the Yukon in a canoe. I went, I, we were sailing from, from Scotland to, to Iceland on a pirate ship. It was a huge wooden pirate ship, uh, which was adapted for, for people with disabilities that, uh, or wheelchairs, or, or there, were, there was a blind girl that, that we were climbing a volcano on Iceland. And, and she was, I was holding hands with her up, and then she was telling me, wow, after this expedition, I don't have any fear to go to university now. <laughs> I can climb a volcano with you. It's, and so, all, I mean, all, I have lots of anecdotes like this, and, and I love it. So then soon I decided that I should do my own, organize my own expeditions because of these experiences. And the first one I started organizing, as you might have heard, or some of you, was to the Amazon, to the Peruvian Amazon. And I, I went there to the place I wanted to, to, to bring people to. Uh, and then when I came back and I was going almost to announce this place, and then we got COVID, no? It was, it was four days after I got back to the Czech Republic, they closed the country. And for the last two years, I haven't been able to, to move basically. So this year, while the situation worldwide gets a bit better, especially the hospitals in, in other countries like in South America. And then I decided to organize a 
wow, a closer one, no, to 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 Sweden, and this is the one that we just announced, right, to to bring people to this magic island that I love in in the middle of the world. And so this is it. Now I don't know if you have more questions about the expeditions. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think? Should we go for dinner then? Okay, <laughs> but I have a... Uh, ah, okay, okay. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Uh, if you can uh, say to your university yourself, like your, your university... Guide, the yes. <laughs> um, only one advice. If you can uh, give him only one advice, like the most important, the main advice, which one I, did you... Just imagine, if I could go back and, and, and come in a dream to, to my young self, I, I will come there and tell myself, don't worry, it will be fine. <laughs> don't worry just have fun it will be fine of course i will give him me him the present <laughs> <laughs> i would give him the talk and say don't work on that supermarket <laughs> <laughs> but but it basically is this that given time if you if you keep at it you will get there like it's it happens it happens and then there are worse times and best time but it's fantastic we have the best job in the world <laughs> okay okay so let me share this last slide uh, that i shared briefly before uh let's see where is it Okay, this one. So you can write down. If you write to this email, just you can just write, introduce yourself or not, just and, and then I know who you are and I will make a filter or something and then I will send you a PDF with all these slides and and some ideas of links and whatever I remember. Write, write to me in, in your email if you have any specific thing and I will try, I don't know how many people will write, but I will try to ask address everything and also you can follow me in social media and in twitter instagram and, and say hi and particularly please start something and, and tell me about it it will make me super happy <laughs> and, and that's all i'm gonna go have dinner thank you <laughs> so much for organizing this. <laughs> and and good good luck in your professional career and see you uh, sorry for the problems before no problem it was it was okay. it happens all the time <laughs> this is how it happened thank you so much thank muchas you. gracias muchas de nada and and say hi everyone bye bye <laughs> <laughs>